We've come. We've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We've come. We've come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. All of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding. Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome. From the time that you entered. God bless you. Once again, Dr. Schaefer, the pastor of Interceding Christian Center, located in the beautiful city of West Memphis at 414 Thompson Avenue. Beloved, if you could do one thing for me before we could start with this wonderful sermon that's upcoming, is if you can subscribe on this side and like on this side, it'll give you updates on new content, sermons, teaching series, and things like that. Let's get into the Word. Now, the Lord dropped inside of my spirit something came from, coming from 1 Chronicle chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. That's right, the prayer of Jabez. In a sermon that he titled, Take the Limits Off, Seeing God in the Year of Perfect Vision. Come on, let's go into sanctuary here with us at the Lord. Let's go. Have your seat. Only real quick to the book of 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles. Good morning, in case I haven't said it already. First Chronicles, hallelujah. Chapter 4. First Chronicles, chapter 4. Hallelujah. We're in the second week of the year, aren't we? Oh my God, we're so blessed. Amen. Second, First Chronicles, chapter 4. Take your Holy Ghost field finger and go down to verse 7. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word of God reads in First Chronicles, chapter 4, beginning at verse 7, these words. And the sons of Helah were Jared, Jezar, and Etan. And Koaz begat Anu and Zobeah, and the families of Arel, the sons of Haram. And Jabez was more honorable than his brother, and his mother called him Jabez, said, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Oh, evil can grieve you. And God, what? That which he requested. Thank God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I get excited when I begin to read the word of God, in particular, in this particular set of scriptures where it says that uh, he said right here in verse 10, he said that thy hand might be with me that thou would keep me from evil. Keep me from doing things uh, uh, because if I do things, there is going to be recompense. There is going to be something that will come up against you because God is not a man. God is not going to lie, nor will God be mocked by foolishness. If you sow it, you will. Oh, my God, my God. I, and I thank God for that scripture. As, but as I look at it, let me flip the scripture. Let me look at this thing real deeply. This is the second, the second week of the year. And I'm in this mindset when I'm thinking there's things I've got to change. People have to begin to recognize who they are in the kingdom. And they need to start acting according to who they are in the kingdom. Not who they are or were in the world. Because the world will have you doing some strange things. They that you think are natural that are totally unnatural. The world will have you accepting things that are totally contrary to the will and the word of God. The world will have you turn a blind eye to things that you know that are wrong. Oh my God. I'm, I'm speaking of change this morning but that's not the title. Hallelujah. Over the last few years I've noticed something. I've, I've come to a realization that I'm trusting God more and more. Hallelujah. The more I see manifest itself in the natural, the more I begin to trust God in the spirit. I'm seeing that God is moving. He's shaking. He's doing things. God is not idle. He's not sitting around doing absolutely nothing because by the virtue of God's word, we are established. By the virtue of God's word is the world upkept because God spoke millennials ago and said that the sun will rise, the moon will set. God set this millennials ago and guess what? It's still going on. It's still going on. And I'm excited about the word of God even on this morning. Because I'm coming to the realization that we serve a big God. 
a big God. We're not talking about some mediocre, paisley, partially doing things, one who will beg for something to happen. We're talking about someone who can speak something and then he can turn his back because he knows that it's going to happen and it'll keep happening because the strength of his word. Hallelujah. This is the type of God that we serve. We serve a mighty God. I come to the realization that he is mighty. He's righteous. He's not some weak God. He's not mediocre God. He's a God that can do anything but fail. He's a good God. He's not a dumb God. You can't fool God. You can't impress God with your intelligence because he possesses all the intelligence there he is in the first place. So he is a great God. He's all-knowing, all-powerful. There's no knowledge that you can give God that he does not already know. There's no revelation that you can reveal to him that he has not already seen and foretold and said it would happen. There's nothing that we can give God except for one thing. Glory. God desires our glory. He desires our glory. So this morning I want to minister to you about our great God. And taking the scripture of Jabez, and everyone knows the story of Jabez, the great prayer that he prayed. Taking the scripture of Jabez, I want to minister to you, take the limits off. Right. Seeing God in the year of perfect vision. Uh -huh. What year is this? And we know those with medical training know that 2020 is a number that denotes an ability to be able to see with perfect vision. It denotes an ability where it's your left eye is just as strong as your right eye. You do not have a dominant eye. It denotes something about you don't, you, you, you're able to see with clarity. You're not seeing with a shade or facade. Like right now, I took my glass off. I can't see the board back there. But when you in the year of perfect vision, you got 2020 vision, you're able to see what is coming. And when you're able to see what is coming, even in the spirit, you're able to avoid the consequences of those things that are coming. Somebody said, this is my year. This is my year. Is my year. I'm taking the limits off. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Jabez took the limits off. <laughs> Jabez took the limits off. He said, I'm not going to restrict what you do. I'm not going to say exactly to do this, but I'm just going to say whatever you do, bless me indeed. He's not saying, Lord, just give me this little piece of land. Give me uh, 40 acres in my view. Just give me a little bit. And guess what? I'll be happy with that. He said, no, Lord, I know that you're bigger than that. I know that you're able to give me much more than that. So I'm just going to open up the windows and say, Lord, bless me indeed. Oh, we need a few people to bless me indeed in their spirit in the house this morning. We need a few people who understand that God is not a limited God. That God is able to do much more than we have. That much what we ask for. The word tells us exceedingly abundantly above he's able to do great things beyond our wildest imagination. Yes. Oh, somebody said, Lord, bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this day and age we're in, there seems to be a serious lack of faith though. That faith that our parents and grandparents had is not as common today as it was then. Our folks knew how to trust God. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but I remember growing up, brother, whereas I only had one pair of shoes. I had a pair of shoes I wore to church. I wore to play at gym, basketball. I wore around the house. One set of shoes. Nowadays, I get out of bed. I got to be careful not to trip over the 15 pair that are sitting out there. There was a day and time where we didn't have much at all and what we had, we trusted God to have. But it seemed like the more that we have, the less we trust God to maintain what he's given us. Uh, we seem to be like the children of Israel who are given so many great things, but one moment that God said, okay, you got all these great things, they forgot about God. They forgot about his mercy. They forgot about his grace. They forgot and began to worship everything except for God. Our folks knew how to trust God. When there was not a drug for every ailment that you had, everything that ailed you, there were some home remedies. Before you had uh, 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 those drugs that were good for colds, you had a little bit of uh, what they call beef talent. Huh? Before you had these things, before you had the fixed vapor rub, you had beef talent. Before you had those things, when there was absolutely nothing that could be done with the conical and still ain't much can be done with it. There, there was something that we believed 
We believe. We believe in the power of God to heal, but we also believe in the power of God to direct us what to do in order to receive our healing. We believe that God could heal, and we believe that God would direct us in the right path to receive our healing. Hallelujah. There was something about that day when a good home remedy came cure. There was a day and time when not everybody had a car to in the driveway. There was a day and time where everyone had a set of bus schedules. I don't know about you, but I knew me. I had a whole set of bus schedules. I knew the city bus like the back of my hand. I only knew how to get around the city because I had been the bus so many times. There was a day and time where all of us did not have these great one or two cars. There was a day and time where the husband and wife could not work the same shift. Because they needed someone to be at home with the kids. Or, and if the wife didn't work the shift, you worked a different shift of the husband. And they needed some another car. They had that same car that they used back and forth. That was a day and time when that really was prevalent. That was a day and time. That was a day when most of us lived below the poverty line and only had one TV. One. One TV. And it was a little bitty TV that everybody hung around, a little 12-inch screen, and guess what? It was black and white. And we all hung around, and we didn't have the option of saying, I don't want to watch this change this to this. We didn't have the option of going through four or five channels to try to figure out what it is we want to watch. It's amazing nowadays that kids will sit up and watch TV, and they'll be up, they got a 12 zillion channel, and they'll flip through all the channels, and they say, ain't nothing on. It's amazing. There was a day and time when the difference between a regular N-word and a smart N-word was that he was a smart N-word. But nowadays we use the term so liberally, everybody, everybody wants to call everybody the N-word. This is a day and time that we're in that we're going to have to start affecting change in our atmosphere. This is a day and time where we're going to have to start speaking clearly what the word of God said. we got to start saying what God said instead of what the world said. we got to start believing what God said believe instead of what the world tells us to believe. If we do not change the paradigm, we as a nation are going down. Can I minister to you this morning? Hallelujah. That was a day and time when we all lived in shotgun houses. Everybody know what shotgun house is? You throw in the front door and fire the back. That was a day and time where we all played stickball. We played hide and go see. We played Captain Mayhide. We played hide and run. We played with cans in the street. We played kick the can. That was a day and time where we all did that. That was a day and time where your neighbors helped to raise your children. Huh? What you say? I remember clearly when we got, I ain't going to say indoor plumbing, but I remember clearly we did not have an indoor bathtub. We had a big old number 10. They called a number 10 wash pan. Huh? A, a number 10 wash pan. And guess what? Uh, the way the number 10 worked, and this is where the phrase comes from, don't throw the baby out with the bath water, was that the oldest person took the bath first and went down to the last person. The last person was the baby of the family, and the water was so dirty by the time the baby of the family got into it, you were afraid that you would lose the baby inside of the murky water. So the phrase came out, don't throw the baby out with the wash water. Oh, you've been tossed up this morning. Hallelujah. In this day and age that we're in, in this day and age that we're in, we're going to have to start changing some things. Yeah. Because we're in a day and age where we're coming to the end of this season that we're in in life. We're coming to the end of this dispensation. We're coming to an end of this dispensation. Can I minister to you for just a little while? Hallelujah. Because we have so much going on, because we get so much revenue, so many, so many things are so readily available, so easily obtained by us, we forgot how to have faith. We forgot how to have faith. Faith has fallen victim to the convenience of this age that we're in. Oh, I long for those times not long ago to come back, a time when grandma's prayer put food on the table. Before you could eat, you had to pray. And I long for the day and time where everyone used to come to the kitchen table. If you didn't come to the kitchen table, you didn't eat. Or if you came to the kitchen table and you didn't like what was on the table, you didn't eat. Nothing. 
I long for that day and time because it taught us discipline. It taught us to appreciate what was placed before us. But nowadays, we're in a day and time where we don't appreciate what is placed before. We're in a day and time where we, we turn our head, we change our mind, we get mad at somebody, and we decide we're not going to have anything. We're in a day and time where we don't forgive and love people the way that we should forgive and love them. We're in a day and time where things are just in a spiral downward. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Lord, take the limits off. Take the limits off. There was a time when grandma's prayer got you out of jail as well as getting you out of hell. A time when people believed God for the things they needed and not Walmart. That was a day and time. And I long for a place that builds faith and not just a good paying job. A time when we all would come together and have a little talk with Jesus. And we'd do what? Tell him about our trouble. He will hear our famous cry. He will answer by all. Oh, I need to hear somebody help me. Nobody will sing with me. Amen. But that was a day and time. And I long for that time. And that connection with God. When, 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 when we were not worried about our money being money. Because God provided all of our needs according to his Riches and glory. When people would say, if your money is low, go to Fred's dollar store. If your money is high, go to TGNY. There was a day and time that I'm longing for, for the faith that we used to have. It took faith to survive in the day. We had faith that did move mountains. We had faith that told the mountains to get the heck out of the way. We had faith that caused people to be cured of dreaded diseases. But nowadays, when our kids hardly lack for anything. Nowadays when there's, if there's not a drug for what ails you, just keep watching TV because it's coming. And most of the drugs that are cures nowadays keep watching TV, you'll hear a lawyer talk about, do you want to sue them? But how many know that it's not the medicine that heals you in the first place? How many know that it isn't how good you are that keeps you on that job in the first place? It isn't how nice you are uh, and how kind you are. If justice was served, you wouldn't have any of those things. This is why we must remember that we are justified by what? Our faith. We're not justified by our good looks. We're not justified by our talent. We're not justified by our faith with someone else. We're justified by our faith. Yeah. And when you are justified by faith, you can pray those bold prayers like Jabez said. You can pray those bold prayers. Lord, I don't know how you're going to bless me, but just bless me indeed. Lord, I don't know why, I don't know where it's going to come from, but I trust you it's going to come from somewhere. It's going to manifest itself. I don't know who you're going to use. You may use the devil to bless me, but I know you're God, and you're able to make the devil bless me, even the devil does not want to bless me. I thank you right now, oh God, hallelujah. How many know that if we had just to serve, we wouldn't be here? If we had just to serve, we would have made it into the new year. We are justified by only our faith in God. But sadly, in epidemic, in epidemic proportions, people are lacking faith. And in essence, have placed a limit on the blessings that God said he will give you. God is not limited by anything that God wants to do, but God will respect your sovereignty. He respect your dominion right. If you say, I don't want it, God ain't going to give it to you. Right. Hallelujah. God will respect because he said, I placed you in the I told you to take dominion. And I said, I want to see what you did with this world. This is why people are so, it's so ignorant where people say, well, why was God at when this happened? No, where were you at when this happened? Were you praying when it happened? Huh? If you were prayed up and prayed up before it happened, you could have possibly prevented it from happening. Nothing happens in the earth without God telling someone it's getting ready to happen. It's just a matter that one who was told it's getting ready to happen did not take action on it. It's all right. We got to learn to pray bold prayers. Bold prayers. Prayers that, that no man can answer, only God can answer. Pray prayers that will see that it was God and not man who moved. Hebrews 4 and 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy.
mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. God's grace is so big that his grace allows you to come to him even when you're not in correct standing before him. But when you're in correct standing before him, God will hear and he will heed to all oh my God. Why do you think 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, oh my God, that's a, that's a powerful word right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray bold prayers. Be as Abraham and petition God boldly for the move of him in your favor. After you pray boldly, you proclaim and confess boldly what God has already done. And after God has manifested the evidence of your faith, you boldly tell others glorifying his name. Oh, I want to tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me tell you how he changed my life. Let me tell you how he brought my children out. Let me tell you how he provided salvation. Oh, let me tell you how he kept me in the midst of the storm. Oh, my God. Somebody don't know it. I know a lot of you don't want to look at news and more. The devil don't want you to look at news. The devil doesn't want you to look at news because he don't want you to see the evidence of what God said was going to happen. He'll tell you, well, it's because you don't want to look at that mess. That's depressing. But he don't want you to see the evidence of God moving. What God said, what prophecy God said, what happened is happening. Yes, yes. We're on the road on yesterday on the way down toward uh, on the way down toward Little Rock. And they said, and I didn't see this until I saw the news later. They said approximately 14 to 17, 18 wheelers turned over on that road yesterday. We only saw a few of them. But 14 to 17 of them turned over. We have five or six houses where trees fell in the house. In the house. We have all these power lines that are down. Down thousands of people without power in the greater Memphis area. Huh? But I go over and I flip the switch, the TV come on. Well, the light come on. Because you know, back in the day we, we didn't have remote control. Back in the day, you were the remote control. Huh? Back in the day, you were just like Alexa. Brian, change the channel. Okay, yes ma'am. Brian, straighten out the static. Okay. Nowadays, we got our little remote control. Oh, let me not get off subject. Amen. Amen. But we've got to learn how to bless God indeed. Because see, God wants us to ask for big blessings. Yeah. He wants us to ask for bold, outlandish blessings. God does not want you to be poor. He said that I have cattle on a thousand hills. He said that you have been engrafted in the family. He does not want you to suffer through poverty. God wants you to be rich and he wants you to speak what his word says and tell somebody how blessed you are by him. Somebody said, bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Oh, you got to say it boldly like you really mean it. See, I'm going to say it boldly. Whenever, every time I say it boldly, I expect to see a blessing. I'm not shocked when a blessing comes my way. When I speak boldly, Lord, bless me indeed. I'm looking for that blessing. I don't even know what the blessing necessarily is going to be. But I know that God is working in my favor. He's working in my behalf. He's looking out for me. He's trying to ensure that I will open my mouth and say, look at God. Oh, hallelujah. After you pray boldly, you proclaim it. You got to be like Jabez. But in order to pray boldly, you got to be first what it says about Jabez in, in verse, in chapter, uh, uh, chapter 1 Chronicles 4, verse 9. You got to be honorable. You got to be honorable. Last week I spoke about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. See, don't miss the part about righteousness. Because people always say, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. They miss the part about righteousness. Oh, they speak and they say things like, faith is, they miss the part about now. They miss the most important part about it is that faith is now. They miss the most important part about it is that God is going to pour out into righteous vessels. He's not going to pour out to those who have what we call a selective repentance attitude. Pastor, stop it. Stop it. We have a lot of people who have selective repentance. That is that they pick and choose what they want to repent over, but some things they won't repent over. But God is calling us into total repentance. If you want the blessings of God, then you're going to have to follow the rules that God set up. Oh, 
Pastor Star. But look at this. Jabez, and, and, and let me reiterate this. You know, I read verses 7 and 8. Move back, son. Move back to verse 7 and 8. Hallelujah. And when I was reading that, and it's, it's funny, look, I, I, have, I have a doctor's in theology, and some of those words I be messing up on still. Amen? So I understand that. But these, these are people, these are generations, these, these are the family members of Jabez, I'm assuming. These are his family members. And it's talking about the genealogy of the family of Jabez. Most of us can't even say our great grandma's name, but it's talking about the genealogy of Jabez. And it went on and on. It started at verse 1 talking about that so and so begat so and so and so and so begat so and so and so and so begat so and so. They were, they were really being rabbits. They were having plenty of children. But all of a sudden, in the midst of saying who begat who, we run across a name of a man called Jabez. Jabez, the name means pain. The, main, the name means, means pain, which means his mother probably went through a painful situation and inhabited him. But Jabez did not languish in his name being pain. He said, I'm not going to be worried about you calling me pain. See, the problem is that we have we misname our children, and our children embrace those poor names, and they begin to act like what those poor names' character is. See, there's character that comes in name, but you got to understand that even if your mom or dad were not were ignorant of certain things, you you got to be wise enough to know I'm not going to live by what that name. I'm going to change my name. Oh my God. Oh, Pastor. There are people in the Bible that obviously made mistakes in name changing and naming their children. Obviously, because Jacob was known as Israel later on, Abram was known as Abraham, and Sarah was known as Sarah. Saul was known as Saul until he became Paul. So sometimes mistakes do happen. But God said, the name reflects the character that I'm putting inside of you. Oh, stop, Pastor. I ain't going to teach on that. I'll get deep into that. But Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. His brother must have been something else. He was more honorable than his brethren. Must have been sister, too. They wouldn't sit around. They wouldn't put the sister in there. But sister were being born, too. The sister were always included in the brother. Okay? So Jabez is more honorable. And Jabez took the time to say, Lord, I'm bringing to your remembrance that I'm being honorable. God has no problem with you bringing to his remembrance what he has promised. God wants you. God don't forget. But he wants you to bring it to the remembrance because part of you being blessed indeed is to remember what God said. Because if you remember what God said, you're going to speak forth what it is that God said. And when you speak forth what it is that God said, you're helping to manifest the blessing that God has promised. Somebody said, Lord. 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 Bless me indeed. Can I get everybody to say, Lord. Lord. Bless me indeed. Bless Hallelujah. And we got to learn to begin to say, Lord, I don't want to place any limits on what it is that you're going to do for me. It does not matter if I'm a fried cook at Wendy's. I can become the CEO of Wendy's. It does not matter if I sweep the floors at Southwest Airlines. I can become the CEO of Southwest Airlines. It does not matter where I start at. What matters is what is inside of me and how I press forward toward the call of the higher Call which is found in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Jabez said, I ain't gonna let myself be deterred because my name means pain. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the limits off my name because there was a limit on my name. We've got to learn to take the limits off of our name. Oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Jabez did not ask for a popcorn prayer. He did not ask him, well, Lord, I, I pray I got enough money when I give this gas pump. Jabez did not ask for, well, Lord, I pray I got enough money when I go to a strive to buy myself two number one. And Jabez did not ask for those simple prayers. Jabez did not even ask for a prayer, well, Lord, I need a simple healing in my body. No, Jabez got audacious with his prayer. He had a nerve to, to petition God Almighty for a blessing indeed. A blessing were indeed. He said, enlarge my territory. Oh, in other words, I need more room to work with. See, you've got to understand if you want God to enlarge your territory, you 
got to work with what it is that you got right now because God is not going to give you more if you're not doing something with what you got already. Oh, that's the parable of the talents. Hallelujah. Enlarge my territory. Bless me indeed. Not bless me in need. Not bless me with a little bit. Uh, bless me indeed. Huh? And, and it says that God granted his prayer. Oh, shout out here, cool. God granted his prayer. What does it look like when God blesses you the way that you ask him to bless you? Huh? It's, it's, it's crazy. When God blesses you the way he asks you to bless you, then you stop worrying about when income tax is coming. You start passing the balls 25 days before W-2s are due, saying when the W-2 is coming out. When God blesses you indeed, then you don't worry about where money is going to come from, and you're so willing to bless other people. When God blesses you indeed, and you are in the frame of being blessed, then you begin to speak forth, look at what God has done, not what man has done. When God blesses you indeed, then you know that you have indeed been blessed. He said, God bless me indeed. He asked God for a blessing that no man could bless him with. He asked God for a blessing, hallelujah, that was going to blow the minds of those who were around him. Because his whole life people had been calling him hey, pain. His whole life people had been characterizing him as someone who only caused misery and agony and heartbreak. But Jabez did not characterize himself by the meaning of his name. But instead, Jabez began to speak forth. That God was going to do what? Bless him indeed. I need a few people who are willing for God to bless. If you believe God can bless you indeed, let me hear a hand clap. Hallelujah. If you believe that God can turn your situation around, let me hear a hand clap. If you believe that God can cure you of all ailments, all diseases, let me hear an amen. If you believe that God is going to bless you indeed, say, Lord, bless me indeed. 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 It's interesting that he said, bless me indeed, Sister Glory. He didn't say, bless me indeed. Well, in other words, he was already blessed. He was already blessed with something. But he asked God, just a little more. Give me some more. Not just a little more, but Lord, give me some more. See, because Jabez was going to use what God used to bless him in order to be a blessing to others. This is why I said, verse 10, bring up verse 10. Hallelujah. Oh, that thou would enlarge my territory and enlarge my coast. Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. That thy hand might be with me and thou may keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. See, sometimes we get caught up in the evil and don't even know it's evil. Because we don't spend enough time listening to the voice of God. God will tell us to do something for somebody. But we won't because we're like, hmm. Oh, but Jabez said, Lord, keep me from that evil where I failed and I missed and I don't know that I'm entertaining angels unaware. Uh, keep me from that evil of not listening to your voice and not adhering to your word. Keep me from that evil because I know if I fail to do something that you said, then it can impact, it can impede what it is that you're going to do for me. Somebody said, Lord, Lord. bless me indeed. Bless me. Oh, I need somebody said, Lord. Bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. God is not listening to those popcorn, those foolish prayers. God is wise enough to discern what's a real prayer and what's not a real prayer. God is wise enough to know that if you're praying for a certain football team to win, that's foolishness. That's humankind. God is not going to move and take something from somebody else in order to give to you. And you're not living right, but yet you're living right. God knows how to determine whether you're going to be blessed indeed or whether you're going to not be blessed indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's not a fool. You're running around doing all these things that are contrary to what it is that the Word of God has been taught to you. And I know that I teach the Word of God. And, and then you're running around doing these things that are totally contrary to it. God is not fooled. He's not turned a blind eye to your foolishness. No, not anymore. God says, since you know, and because you know, you need to do right. If you're not doing right, those who know to do right but choose not to do right, they are whooped with... Oh, stop it. Oh, God, hallelujah. Can I minister to you for a little while longer? Because Jabez's name didn't bring up pictures of confidence. No one wanted to be, no one wanted to be associated with him. No one wanted to be associated with him because he had a great name. People probably avoided him. But in his bold prayer, he was taking the limits of God. 
And the final sentence of Jabez chapter, a uh, 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 final sentence about Jabez in 1 Chronicles 4, and God granted him what he requested. How about that? Look at God. <laughs> God granted him what he had requested. What he had requested. If you want to have money in the bank, you need to put money in the bank. You need to put money in the bank. So in other words, if you want God to bless you, you need to put the, the coinage of your obedience in the bank so that God will bless you, so that he will expand your territory, so that he will enlarge your coat, so that he will give you what it is that he, he wants you to have. God wants you to be so blessed that it causes your neighbors who are not living righteous to want to live righteous. God wants you to be so blessed that it will cause your haters to say, look at this person. God wants you to be so blessed. Oh, hallelujah. Bless me indeed. Somebody said, Lord, bless me. Indeed. Ha, 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 ha. What we know about Jabez is he went from a simple pain to a simple God's greatness. And, and he eventually became the tribe's leader. <laughs> you didn't know that. Jabez took the limits off his blessing and he challenged God. God has no problem if you're righteous standing to challenge him. Hallelujah. God has no problem if you're righteous standing to challenge him. He has no problem with you saying, Lord, I need for you to manifest this situation right here. Lord, I need for you to bless me again. God has no problem just being right standing. Hallelujah. I, I, I can recall that. I recall one time I was in the army and they were trying to call me on my third tour to Germany. I was sprecking much dirt already. I didn't want to sprecking no more. They didn't want to go on another tour and end up. And the thing was that I, I, was, I was sort of tired of Germany. And I was going to the headquarters of all of the army in Europe. I was going there. I was going to work for the commanding generals. Uh, uh, they call it USARA shape. I, I was on my way. I was going to go work in a great, great job. But I really didn't want to go. I was at church. I was loving what we was doing. Church. I was loving it. I didn't want to go. But I didn't complain. I said, Lord, whatever your will be, let it be. Let it be. That was my prayer, and that prayer went on for a few months. Then all of a sudden, the second Gulf War thing came about, and they specifically, they specifically said, the soldiers who have this career grade, rank, who has this particular skill, who has done such and such, we want them to not go anywhere. We want them to stay where I slept. It touched me. <laughs> God shifted the entire U.S. Army to touch me. He shifted them so that I did not have to pick up and leave off the work that I was doing. This is the kind of blessing that God will do for you. He will change people if you would just change your heart. If you would change your standing with him, God will move problems out of your way. God will cause them to either change or he will move them. Somebody said, Lord, bless me indeed. Say it like a black church. Lord, bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory. See, somebody has a blessing that's waiting for them at work even on tomorrow. If you just open your mouth and say, Lord, bless me indeed. God will begin to work on the heart of that manager. You'll begin to work on the heart of that co-worker. And God will begin to change some things in their life. And they'll bless you in Jesus. The Bible clearly does not say that it says that if you give unto God, it will be pressed down. It will be shaken. Oh, oh my God, my God. It will be shaken again. It will be running over when men give unto your bosom. It did not say that holy men would give only to your bosom. It said that anybody that God chooses to bless you has no choice. They will be compelled to be a blessing to you. Somebody said, Lord, bless me indeed. Some may say, Pastor, how can you pray so boldly? How can you pray so boldly? You only got two or three people that are faithful to you. How can you take things that, that people think that could not possibly happen and you just pray and they, they seem like they happen? I can pray so boldly because I've seen God do it before. I've seen God transform before. I've seen God move before. I've seen God open up ways and doors before. I've seen God do it. And if he did it before, he can do it again. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me, let me finish this up. I only got 50 more pages. Huh? Some say, Pastor, you're overly optimistic. Well, it's because what the Father has said about me. He said the same thing about you. He said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what fearfully made means? It means that those with medical knowledge will look at you and they'll be like, oh, how are you still alive? That should have killed you. By everything that we know in the medical world, you should be down at Wolf Brothers right now and your family should be grieving and picking out your casket back. And how? That means if you're, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, it means that people marvel about what it is that God has placed on the inside. But the thing about being fearfully and wonderfully made, the enemy does all he can to keep you ignorant of that fact. See, deep down on the inside, God has placed something in you, an ability, a skill. He's placed something in you that's inside of you that all you've been doing around here has just been scratching the surface. Scratching the surface. Huh? See, because God has sovereignty. Let me tell you what God does. God has sovereignty. What he'll do is that he'll allow gold dust to be on the surface so you know that there's gold on the inside. Huh? So when you're scratching around the surface, you see that gold dust, but the enemy tries to harden, harden the very surface, so the crust, so that you can't get in. But see, God said, I will break open the crust so that you can get inside and you can see the gold that's on the inside of you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me move on. Uh, the thing is that, as Sister Schaefer said this morning, we have got to be very careful what comes out of our mouth. Because the power of life and death is where? In the power of our tongue. In what your tongue says. What your tongue says about you. See, we've got to bring things under subjection. We've got to bring thoughts even under subjection. Because if we don't bring thoughts under subjection, then those thoughts will do what? They'll get into our heart. We've got to catch those thoughts when they get into our heart. Why? Because once they get into our heart, they're going to come out of our mouth. Huh? So the process is, is a thought gets into our heart, comes out of our mouth. Oh my God, my God. There's a thought that gets into, goes to our, comes out of our Oh my God. Don't you realize that's the same as, that's the same as me going, I don't, I don't eat Taco Bell past a certain time. It used to be I could eat Taco Bell any time, but now I can't eat Taco Bell past 7, 8 o'clock night. I can't do it. Young people laugh if you want to. You'll be there one day. Keep living. Huh? Because the thought, the thought of Taco Bell, huh? The thought of Taco Bell coming into my mind. I roll over there because it's now in my heart. Then I get that indigestion that hurts. It's coming out of my mouth. Oh, stop, Pastor. Uh, somebody said, Lord, bless me indeed. You got to catch what comes to your mind because you don't want to get to your heart. Because if it comes to your heart, it's going to come out of your mouth. And if it doesn't come out of your mouth, it will not become substance. If you can keep it from coming out of your mouth, it will not become substance. Huh? Oh, my God. Because what you have inside of you is a gift that is so great. You have the ability to be able to create by saying things. And those things will come to pass. If you begin to speak negative to your son, he got the best name in the world. But you speak negative over him, then those negative things will come. To pass. You ain't no good. You just like your dad. You blah, blah, blah. No negative things will come to pass. But if you speak life into a situation, you are better than son. Son, you can rise up. You can stand above. You can do better things than you're speaking life to a situation. Oh, my God, my God. I'm optimistic because long ago, God had said to me, I got your back. I got your back. Say, Lord, Lord, thank you. For having my back. Thank you for having my back. See, it may not look like it, but as a child, I went through some things. I know some of y'all know this already. Like, Pastor, don't tell another story. Please don't. <laughs> but I went through some things, and those things I went through was so that God would be glorified in my life. Speech and heaven classes and stuff like that. See, some people pick on me because they say, Pastor, you always spit when you talk. 
But you don't understand the six years of speech therapy that I went through to get to this point here. See, sometimes you got to be careful what you say because you don't know what someone went through in order to arrive where they arrived at. And you, you're talking about what, talking about how bad they look now, but you didn't see them yesterday. You didn't see where they were before. You're talking about how much sinful life they have right now, but you don't know that there's been a change in them and they've come up. They might not be doing all the sins, all the things they should be doing, but they're doing better than they used to do. Oh, clap your hands and glorify God. Hallelujah. See, see, you you wasn't with you weren't with me when I flipped three or four cars because I was an alcoholic. You weren't with me. You don't know what I went through. You don't know why I love as hard as I do love. You don't know why my patience is always there. You don't understand that the things I went through in order for God to be able to use me in the way that He used me is because I spoke my mind and I said, Lord, bless me indeed. Bring me out of this. Don't let me die with the curse and bless me indeed. Oh. Can I finish up, y'all? Hurry up, Pastor. I believe God for a Malachi blessing. I believe God for a Malachi. And I know what Malachi blessing is. That means that all the things that you have poured into God, he blesses you ten times over. Ten times over. I believe God for a Solomon blessing. A Solomon blessing. A Solomon blessing is where Solomon, just like Jabez, he, he must have known or something. He, he said, Lord, I'm not going to tell you what to bless me. Will you just bless me any way you see fit? Huh? Oh, we got to get in our hearts like the old song, like the song said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Whoever you're blessing this season, don't bless without blessing me. Whoever you're delivering this season, don't deliver without delivering me. Lord, I need for you to take control of all the aspects of my life. See, you've got to understand that when God comes into a situation, when he comes into a situation to bless me, if you're hanging around me, you're going to be blessed too. God does not just bless one. He blesses those who are open to receive of his blessing. See, the thing is that in our lives, we got to realize that God wants to. I want to bless you. God is a glory hound. He loves to get the glory. He loves to get the glory. Uh, this is why he blesses those who give him the glory. I, I, I'm not real concerned about big time preachers getting all these such, such and such. They put in the work. God will deal with them if they're wrong. So I'm not going to sit around and criticize. I learned a long time ago not to criticize other preachers. I learned that a long time ago. They may not preach like I preach, and I don't preach the greatest. I'm okay with that. But I learned don't criticize someone else's ministry. I learned that. I was talking about this one preacher who would come on the radio in Virginia, when I was in Virginia, and I would giggle because he'd come on at lunchtime and he would say, Okay, well, God's going to give gold teeth and you have all these people with testimony of gold teeth and stuff like that. And I was like, look at this. Somebody else about to get a gold teeth. Woo -hoo -hoo. Just laughing. And he even said with my former pastor, Bishop Crockett, and we would giggle about it and stuff. And one Saturday, after Friday show, I had been giggling about it. I'm lying in bed, and all of a sudden I feel like a buzzing in my body. A buzzing. The buzzing went from my toes and came up to my face. Then the buzzing hit my mouth. And my, it's like my teeth were just rattling. You know, when, when some, sometimes your body is sleep, you want to sleep. You know, that buzzing you get when it's real deep sleep, that's how it felt. It was rattling. I was like, oh my God. So I went and I looked in the mirror. And when I looked in the mirror, I saw a gold streak across the front of my teeth. Does the shape tell you that? I saw a gold streak across the front of my teeth and across the bottom of my teeth. This was Saturday. I couldn't wait to get to the office on Sunday morning to show my pastor. And he said, we don't have to repent. We can't do that. Huh? So you got to be very careful. If you want God to bless you indeed, you got to be careful. Keep your mouth off his people. Keep your mouth off his people. Keep your, keep, when someone is serving with a sincere heart and they're doing what God has called them to do, they may not be doing it up to your expectation, but keep your mouth off them. Don't be speaking death over them. You don't know what God is doing. You don't know how God is moving. See, if you want to be in the business of being blessed, then you're going to have to be obedient to that word there. Amen? Amen.
You know, the reason we don't realize how much God can do is that we talk him out of it. We talk God out of blessing us. God be all poor. So I'm going to bless them indeed. And then we be talking about, well, I guess I can't have that. Huh? I don't know if I can. I don't think that I can. We talk God out of the blessing. The songwriter said we are just one word away from our blessing or our curse. Life as well as death as the abundance of life that Christ wants us to have is spoken out of the power of our tongue. Because what comes from the heart will eventually reach the tongue and it will eventually affect your life. I'm going to wrap up. Taking the limits off God requires you walk. You to walk and work in faith. Not to wallow in wine and self-pity. Huh? Taking the limits off requires you to walk and work in faith. Not to wallow in wine and self-pity. I said it twice, I'm going to say it again. And I'm not saying it because I'm trying to understand what my notes are saying. I'm saying it because I want you to hear what I'm saying. Taking the limits off of God requires you to walk and work in faith. And not to waddle and whine in self-pity. Huh? Walk and work in faith. Not to waddle and whine in self-pity. God wants us to believe him. And by believing it means that what we say out of our mouth says believe. Believe. I believe you. I believe you. Lord, I believe you. That's what we call it. See without spiritual eyes. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. We have to walk and work. How? In faith. And not to waddle and Wine and self pity. Oh, woe is me. This is such and such. That happened. This happened. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all not old enough to remember, but I know just a few of us old enough to remember this. The Flintstones. And remember that one character on there? That's probably the Pepper from Bam Bam Show. It's Pepper from Bam Bam Show. That one character on there named Slep Rock. Everybody doing good. They doing their cave dances and stuff like that. And then they look up and see Slep Rock. They say, oh no! Because Slep Rock come and he professes this. Lousy, lousy woman. He complains. He gripes. And when he complains and gripes, a deal falls. See? Life and death is in the power of God. If you want God to bless your deeds, you take those limits off of God that you have been putting on God. Stand on your feet, y'all. If you want God to bless you indeed, walk and work in faith. Don't be all caught up in your fear. God is bold. When you take the limits off God, you take the limits off your blessing. Hallelujah. When you take the limits off God, you take the limits off your blessing. Being made in the image of God, the Lord wants us to know the authority that we have in ourselves. Because we're made in the image of God. This is why he wants to be conscious of what it is that we say and what it is that we do. Because the creative nature of man, oh, so oh God, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again because you need to hear this. Man in his creative ability is able to manifest many things. If God did not restrict some of the things that he would manifest. Huh? This is why we got to be very careful in this last day we in. You better be raptured. Because there's going to be some things that are going to come and manifest themselves. That are inside the hearts of mankind. There's going to be some demonic entities walking the earth if you're not raptured. It's, it's going to happen. It's going, you, you, if your nightmare is vampires, guess what? They will happen. Your nightmare is wolf man, it'll happen. Your nightmare is zombie, which seems to be everyone's nightmare. It's happened. It'll happen. That's why you need to be raptured. Huh? It's only Holy Spirit that keeps us from suffering all these things that are in the evil imagination of the enemy and the man. Oh, somebody said, Lord, bless me indeed. 
Come on, I need everybody to say, Lord, Lord. bless me indeed. Yes. Now can I get everybody again to say, Lord, Lord, bless me indeed. When I hear everybody, we'll stop saying it and say, Lord, Lord. bless me indeed. Bless me. Now lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for the ministry of your word. Take the limits off. And seeing God in the year of no limited vision, in the year of 2020 vision, we thank you for the word. We pray, Lord God, the word will manifest itself inside of your people, Father God, that they would really know. Father God, that they would understand, Lord God, the power that they have at their fingertips. And that they would reverence the power that you have allowed them to have. I'm praying right now, Father God, for someone who does not know you as their Lord and Savior. And Lord God, many are playing with your gifts. They're playing with, Lord God, your purpose inside of them, Father God. They're taking it lightly. But I'm praying for them right now, Father God, that they would open their eyes and be able to see what it is that you have for them. Lord, I bless you right now in advance for your word. I bless you right now in advance for your blessing. I bless you right now that my territory has even been enlarged. And you're going to what? Bless me indeed. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Somebody said, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now clap your hands like God is a good God. And be worthy to be praised. Lord, don't clap your hands like Pastor Chase said, clap your hands. Clap your hands if you expect a blessing, hallelujah. If you expect a blessing, hallelujah. Clap your hands like he's going to do it. He's already done. Clap your hands. Come on now. Oh, y'all stop clapping your hands. Oh, my, my God, my God. If you don't clap, stop clapping your hands and your blessings will stop too. Amen. You need to understand that this is real. This is real. Bless me indeed, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I pray that you enjoyed the word today and that it touches you within a deep place in your heart and it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.